Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now many times we ask ourselves the question, what is the best phone that I could buy? And we're taking the guesswork out of that decision for you with our best of Android series. And in this particular installment, we're going to be looking at performance. Which phone has the highest performance? So if you're ready, let's go. Now just to remind you of the phones that we're testing in our best of Android series, in no particular order, they are the Sony Z5 Premium, the Nexus 6P, the LG V10, the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, the Motorola Droid Turbo 2, or the Moto X Force as it's known internationally, and the Blackberry Priv. So before we look at the individual performance results of these phones, let's just remind ourselves of what chip we find in the internals of each of these devices. Now the Sony Z5 Premium, the Nexus 6P and the Moto X Force all use the Snapdragon 810, which is Qualcomm's system on a chip that uses four Cortex A57 cores and four Cortex A53 cores. And the Cortex A57 cores are used for the heavy lifting and the Cortex A53 cores are used for the lighter stuff because the A53 is more battery efficient and so the more stuff that's going to get put on there the longer the battery life however the Cortex A57 cores are there when hard work is needed to be done now the other octa-core phone in our lineup is the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 and it uses Samsung's own homegrown Exynos 7420 now it's also an octa-core processor and it also has four Cortex A57 cores and four Cortex A53 cores and we'll see how they perform compared to each other in the test results we're going to see in a moment now two phones in our lineup are actually only hexa-core phones and they are the BlackBerry Priv and the LG V10 and they are both using the Snapdragon 808. Now the 808 only has two Cortex A57 cores and four Cortex A53 cores and so it'll be interesting to see how they perform against the octa-core phones in our lineup. So let's start by looking at the Antutu scores. Now, Antutu is one of the most popular benchmarks available for Android today. But the thing we've got to remember about this benchmark and other benchmarks is that the workloads they put on the CPU are completely artificial. They don't reflect real life at all. However, they are a good guide to see what performance levels the CPU could reach if it was pushed. That's the CPU and the GPU, of course. So let's have a look at the actual results that we found from our Antutu testing. In first place, we find the Samsung Note 5. That was then followed by the Moto X Force, by the Nexus 6P, and by the Sony Z5 Premium. Now that's all of our octa-core telephones. Then we find a separate category, slightly lower results for the BlackBerry Priv and the LG V10. In fact, what we find now with the Antutu scores, in fact, will be repeated again and again through all the different benchmarks that we have run. That basically the octa-core phones perform the best. Out of those, the Note 5 tends to be the winner. And then slightly behind, you'll get the hexa-core Snapdragon 808 devices. So let's carry on. Another popular benchmark is Geekbench 3. And Geekbench 3 gives us two results, the single-core result and the multi-core result. Now the single-core result tells you how fast one core is on the phone, regardless of whether it's got two cores or four cores or eight cores or six cores, how fast is just one of those cores, and that's the single-core result. Then it has the multi-core result when it tries to use all the cores simultaneously to produce an overall score. Now obviously the hexa-core phones are going to do worse in the multi-core test because they are missing two cores compared to the others. However, the single-core tests will tell us whether individual cores are faster or not. So let's have a look at the results. So looking at these results, what we find is that the fastest individual core speed goes to the Galaxy Note 5. Following on from that, we get the Snapdragon 810 processor results. However, we have a disappointing performance by the Nexus 6P. And then in last place, we get the two Snapdragon 808 phones, the BlackBerry Priv and the LG V10. Switching over to the multi-core test, again, we see the Galaxy Note 5 scores the best. Very close behind it was the Sony Z5 Premium. And of course, in last place is the BlackBerry Priv, again, because it's missing two cores, which is really unfair when it comes to doing a multi-core test. Our next set of performance tests were performed by the Basemark OS 2 app, which you could, of course, download from the Google Play Store, as you can these other test apps that we've been using. And looking at the scores, we find the same story yet again. The Galaxy Note 5 has the best score, then the three Snapdragon 810 devices, fairly evenly matched, and then in last place, the BlackBerry Priv and the LG V10. 
Up until now, these tests have really been a combination of CPU and GPU tests. Maybe Geekbench is more CPU uh, focused. However, there are some 3D benchmark tests that really just test the GPU in cooperation with the CPU to see what you can get out of these devices when it comes to 3D gaming. Now, the first of our 3D benchmarks comes from the 3D Mark app using its Slingshot test suite. Now, the Slingshot test suite is specifically designed for the OpenGL ES 3.1 graphic system, which is something you find in Android 5.0 and upwards. So let's have a look at the results. Here, for a change, the Galaxy Note 5 didn't win. In fact, the Nexus 6P gave the best score. In fact, it won by quite a way. After that, in second place, we get the Galaxy Note 5, then the other two Snapdragon 810 processors, the Moto X Force and the Z5 Premium. And then again at the bottom, we find the Hexacore phones, the BlackBerry Priv and the LG V10. Another popular 3D benchmarking app is GFX. And the GFX results are again quite interesting, but tend to follow the norm that we've seen up until now. And here things again return to normal. The Galaxy Note 5 is the overall winner, and in second place is the Sony Z5 Premium. A good showing by the Nexus 6P, however not as good as it was in the previous app. A poor showing, unfortunately, by the Moto X Force, which is almost beaten by the BlackBerry Priv. And then in last place we find the LG V10. Now benchmarks are fine. They tell us something about what the processor can do. And so far we've seen across all these benchmarks a basic pattern uh, merging about which phone has the highest performance. However, benchmarks don't really tell you much about real life. So what about loading a game? How long does it take to load your favorite app up? Well, we loaded up six apps and measured how long it would take to load each one and then took the average. Now those apps are Brave Frontier, Summoner's War, Clash of Clans, Farmville 2, Walking Dead, and Game of Thrones. So let's have a look at the results. In this particular test, again, the Note 5 didn't win. However, the Moto X Force did. However, only by a fraction. When you dive into the individual results, you'll see that the Note 5 struggled on just two particular games, one of them being Farmville. And it just took slightly longer to load than it did on the Moto X Force. And therefore, the Moto X Force has the better average overall score. Unfortunately, the worst performance is given by the LG V10 and the BlackBerry Priv. Now, overheating is a subject that people talk about all the time with their mobile phones. How warm does the device get on the back? How warm does it get when you're playing 3D gaming? And more particularly, how warm does it get when you're recording video? So we've done some tests for you. We recorded some video to see what the temperature rise was on each of the devices. And here are the results. And as you can see, the Moto X Force has the biggest temperature rise across all of our devices, almost 13 degrees. And in comparison, the Galaxy Note 5 is only a couple of degrees. The other phones seem to perform pretty well. The only one that stands out other than the Moto X Force is the BlackBerry Priv, which at some point had an 8 degree temperature rise when recording full HD video. Well, that was full HD video. What about 4K video? Well, we did that test as well. And here are the results. As before, the Moto X Force has the greatest temperature rise. However, this time it's joined by the LG V10, which also has a significant temperature rise during the time of recording uh, 4K video. The Note 5 doesn't do so quite so well this time with a seven degree rise in temperature, which is similar to that of the BlackBerry Priv. The winner in this particular category is the Nexus 6P with only a two or three degree rise while recording 4K video. And we have just one more test for you. Which phone can record the most video before the app stops? Either because it has a pre-built limit that's built into the app that stops it from recording or because the phone overheats and the recording can't continue. So here are the results. As you can see, for uh, 1080p video, the Galaxy Note 5 is the clear winner. However, also a good showing from the BlackBerry Priv and the uh, Z5 from Sony. However, when it comes to 4K video, the BlackBerry Priv, the Galaxy Note 5 and the LG V10 are all limited to five minutes of video. And then the app actually stops them from recording. And the winner for 4K video in this particular instance is the Sony Z5 Premium, which can manage around 30 or 40 minutes of video before it overheats and then has to stop. So what does all that mean? Well, clearly the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 is the general overall winner. It won many of the tests, didn't win all of them, but it clearly was the leader throughout the whole of these set of comparisons. 
Now behind the Galaxy Note 5, we find the three Snapdragon 810 phones. They are the Sony Z5 Premium, the Nexus 6P, and of course the Motorola Droid Turbo 2. Now all of these phones did very, very well, and there's not much to uh, separate them. In one test, maybe the Droid one, in another test, maybe the 6P one, in another test, maybe the Z5 one. But overall, if you take the average, they basically perform the same throughout all of the tests. And then in a category on their own, you'll find those two hexacore phones, the BlackBerry Priv and the LG V10. Now the thing to remember is that these are all high performance phones. None of them are gonna give you any problems in terms of gaming or in general day-to-day uh, day -day usage. But we are comparing the best of the best here. And when you compare the best of the best, the Note 5 is the winner. Well, why don't you use the comments below to tell me what you think about the performance tests of these particular phones. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Also, you can follow me on social media. And also, please do check out our other best of Android videos that we are publishing at this time. And as for me, I'm going to see you in my next video.